You're listening to the Lux Life Discovered Podcast, where we talk with people who are living a lifestyle that reflects their passion, because we believe everyone should be living their best life, their Lux Life. The show is hosted by Rick Steiner with Steiner Event Group, a premier national event planning company, and co-hosted by Shannon Richmond, the vice president of the Panama City Beach Chamber of Commerce. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications of future episodes. The show is produced by 30A Media and is broadcast on your favorite podcast outlets, as well as YouTube, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TVs, and other major brand smart TVs. Hello, I'm Rick Steiner. Welcome to Lux Life Discovery. Our guest today is Audrey Gwynn with Cruise in Review. So, Audrey, welcome. Hey, Rick. Thank you for having me today. It's good to see you. It's been a while since we've seen each other in person, so it's <laughs> Good to see you virtually. How's yes, that? absolutely. <laughs> I know you and I both keep the highway hot, I'm sure. And um, yeah, it's so, it's so good to see you, even if it's through a computer screen. <laughs> okay, good deal. So tell me about the how you and Blake started with this whole cruise. Yeah. And, you know, so um, you sell I, cruises, but you also do the review as well. Yes, so, yes. You know, tell me about that. So my husband and I, you know, we start, we met in 2012 um, and we've all both have had a big passion for travel, um, even when we were just in college back in 2012. And um, we have always fallen in love with cruising. And the reason we love cruising so much is because back then when we didn't have full time jobs, it was a great way to vacation on a budget um, and still have, you know, get a full seven day trip and you know, take you to all these really cool places um, and be, a, you know, something you could do financially even working part-time or just getting a full-time job, you know, and not necessarily having those big buck salaries. And so we fell in love with the concept of cruising. And um, my husband and I both have a news background. We both used to work at the local TV station here in Jonesboro, where we're located. Um, and so the thought of like writing and writing news and telling our story um, was something that we've always both enjoyed. And so he decided that we needed to start a page that was specifically because we get asked all the time because we do travel so much about what is our favorite places what is our favorite um cruise line you know because we do we we definitely um we've been on them all we we've been on golly I think him and I together have been on 22 and I think um just Blake, I think he's been on 23 or 24 because he, he's been on some even before him and I got together um so we started this cruise and review page where we were just like it explains, we were reviewing cruises um, on the website. And so as we started to do that, um, we started getting a lot of ask on what, can you help us book that? Can you, um, we want to do the same thing y'all did. How in the world do we, do we go about that? And so um, we, we decided to jump into the travel agency thing. So yes, we are a page that is full of lots of useful travel information, but now we also book travel um, because it just kind of went along together. And I'll tell you, as somebody that's a frequent traveler, we also get a lot of personal benefits um, from being the travel agent. And so that definitely has helped us as well um, because we've been able to experience some of the other cruise lines through the travel agency um, and allowing us to share that knowledge too that we hadn't done before um, we started all of this. Right. So, okay, for someone like myself, Debbie and I, of all the things we've done in life and since we've been married, we have never been on a cruise. Oh my gosh. So, I know. So what do you what would you tell someone that's never been on a cruise? I guess at any age, but also for the senior citizen group who thinks they're too <laughs> old or you know what I'm saying? Because yes, I get what you're saying, but I don't classify you as a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we there with um with all the different cruise lines, they're definitely geared towards certain groups of people. Um, so you have you know your Carnival cruise line and your Royal Caribbean cruise line that are definitely geared more towards families. Um, now we go on them as couples and we have a great time, but they definitely, their ships are full of activities that are great for kids. And it's very, it's an energizing experience, um, on both of those. Now, if it's just you and Debbie, as an example, it's just a couple, you're wanting a relaxing spirit experience. You call yourself a little older, um, you know, you we might look at Princess Cruise Line because Princess is definitely a, a lot more of a laid back experience. 
Um, and Princess also does a really good job with the with sharing knowledge about where you're going. They're very port intensive cruises, so it's if it if it's more about you want to go see places versus just getting on a cruise ship and having a great time. Um, Princess is a great cruise line to do that because they're very knowledgeable about the ports they go to. They're um, you know on the ship they have activities that I feel like fit more of the adult um age range versus having things for kids like Royal Caribbean and, and Carnival may have um and then there's also Virgin Cruise Line Virgin Cruise Line is adults only period you know you have to be 18 or older to go on that that style cruise but I'll also say if you're wanting a more of a relaxing experience Virgin is not your answer <laughs> so you know like for you and Debbie I definitely would push more of a princess Norwegian um, MSC style cruise line versus um, like a carnival or a virgin or a um, you know a Royal Caribbean you could also look at celebrity um, because all of those cruise lines are again geared towards more of an adult experience and geared towards a little bit more of an older crowd or someone that's wanting a more relaxing calm experience and not so much a party you could say yeah, I don't want it too relaxing where we you know don't move yeah so yeah 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 so but you know and and being a first time cruiser too I mean we always ask do you want a seven day do you want a five day and I also gear the ones that have never been on a cruise before to pick look at some of the larger ships um because you know if you've never been on a boat before you might get a little weary about getting seasickness now they're definitely things to prevent that and we always like teach our clients about how to prevent it if you are worried about it what to bring um but there's a lot of the newer cruise ships that when they're out on the water they're so big now that you can't even feel a move which is crazy wow. but um but there it's a good time and it's a great way to vacation on a budget I mean when you if you don't have just a ton of money to spend it's a great way to know like exactly how much you're going to spend there's no really surprise costs when you go on a cruise um, because for a lot of people we tell them like listen you get on that ship you don't have to spend a dime once you get on the ship um, unless you just want to you know all your stuff is paid for in advance and cruises you know include your hotel your food your activities I mean it's all included um, in the price and so that's why we fell in love with it many years ago was because it was a great way for us to travel and venture out um, on a on a budget per se you know because we 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 didn't the the income that was coming in you know lavish vacations were like <laughs> crazy to think about <laughs> right so are you are people surprised when you say it's a vacation on a budget you know not necessarily um, because you get a lot of people that don't necessarily want they they're trying to take they've got all these kids we book lots of family vacations um and we do honeymoons as well but we do um lots of ones that's got you know four and five kids or they've got three kids and so they're trying to find the best thing to take their kids where there's something for everybody um and there's something that's not going to cost them a million dollars you know um and so we all we really we right. push cruising because there are so many activities for each age group depending on if you have kids if you don't have kids um but you know that they're not necessarily i think there are some people that are shocked when you tell them, hey, cruises are super affordable because they think of it as a, la a lavish vacation that nobody can afford. And, you know, you have to teach them like there's different types of staterooms, there's different types of ships, the places you're going all affect the cost of the actual vacation. And so you definitely, I'm like, we can find you a cruise. You just tell me how much money, you know, you're wanting to spend and when you might want to go and we'll we'll make it happen. <laughs> so what what's the most, uh... What stood out to you most about cruising that made you love it so much? You know, I'm a very, I'm a person that doesn't necessarily like to do the same thing every day. So I love the beach, but I don't necessarily want to sit on the same beach for seven days. And the one thing that I loved about cruising the most was the amount of places and ports and beaches we have been to. Um, just because of cruising, you know, we, we've been on trips that you're in a different place every single day for seven days. And those are whirlwind trips, but golly, they're a, they're a blast. Um, 
you know, but we've also been on trips that are a little bit more of a relaxing experience where you have, you have three ports of call and two days to rest and chill out by the pool. And so it's, you get adventure with relaxation. And I think that's what really surprised me the most about a cruise was all the, the, the places they can get to in seven days, you know, what you can explore within five to seven days, um, depending on how, um, you know, how long your cruise is. Right. Well, so the port of calls, that's, that's an important aspect of selecting what kind of cruise and which yes. line you want to go on. So what is like on the ship when, when you're like actually at sea between ports, um, for people that don't know what all, because it's amazing. They're like yeah. floating seats. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause I do get this a lot. Well, I don't want to be stuck on a ship for seven days and no. I'm like, Oh my gosh, don't even say that because it's <laughs> nothing like that. Um, you know, and again, depending on what experience you're looking for is what ship we kind of geared towards our clients to pick. Um, but you know, there's, there's some ships that have so many restaurants on their ship. You won't eat all of them. You won't get to enjoy all of them in seven days. Cause there's so many to pick from, um, you know, but during, on the sea days, you have a lot of people that will, um, you have a lot of people that will sit by the pool. Um, you have a lot of people that will, you know, hang out they 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 have a stateroom that has a balcony or they end up on one of the open air parts of the ship and they like to sit there and read a book um and have lunch and um but then also a lot of the ships have shopping so you can do um you know some of the Royal Caribbean ships even have like name brand stores like Michael Kors and Coach and I think one of them even has a, a Tiffany store which is pretty crazy we have not been on that ship yet but um you know so that so there's a lot of shopping Blake yeah. is Blake is bored that ship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, that's, there's a reason why we haven't been on that one, I'm sure. But <laughs> um, you know, and then they're all of them have casinos, if that's your thing. Um, but also too, each of the cruise lines, because we've been on several now, each of the cruise lines do a great job with scheduling activities throughout the day. So when you have those days at port or days at sea, they have um, you know, they have volleyball competitions, they have Put put competitions. They have bingo. They have um, Virgin. When we went on Virgin, they had um, deal or no deal was their thing. So they had they did that on the sea days, or they had um, parades that they would do um, in the middle of the ship that everybody could go watch. And then they also have the production shows on Royal Caribbean, on Virgin, on Princess are incredible. So you know, go see a show like with Royal Caribbean. They have. And some of their ships have ice rinks, aqua theaters, and regular stage theaters, and they also offer the Broadway experience. So there, you're going to see Broadway style shows like Cats and um, Hairspray, Mamma Mia. Those are just to name some of them. Grease is on Royal Caribbean, and so those are those are incredible shows that they do a fantastic job putting on. Um, but those are things you do during a sea day. Um, you also, of course, get some great lunch and dinner somewhere. Um, you know, just kind of explore the ship. Do whatever you want to do. If you want to take a nap, take a nap. If you want to go um, play in the volleyball competition, go play volleyball, you know, or if you want to hang out by the pool. I mean, there's literally, there's always live music going on. And there is something to do somewhere throughout the whole day. But if you don't do anything, it's because you chose not to do anything. Yes, agreed. And 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 there are people that that's just their thing, and that's okay. You know, we we went on a cruise back in December. We went on Virgin, um, and we didn't have the greatest weather. We left out of Miami, and we didn't have the greatest le weather. But it was in December, so they had uploaded tons of Christmas movies on the, your stateroom TV that you could hang out in your room and watch. And we literally got some snacks and went to the room and had our balcony door open so you could watch it rain out in the ocean and we watched Christmas movies all day and but that's what we wanted to do we wanted a relaxing thing um but it was it was so nice because you're also on a cruise and if you got bored doing that and you wanted to go do something else you could <laughs> that's that's neat yeah all right we definitely are going to do that because like I said we that's one thing we've never I don't know we once the children came on, I don't know what the reason was. We, yeah. we just never did that. So well, hey, that's we'd love it. To help we're you guys. On our list. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. I'll definitely come to you. And so that brings up a good point. Why should someone come to you to book a cruise instead of doing it themselves? I mean, I know the answer and you've covered a lot of it, but 
go ahead. I'll yeah, let you... yeah, absolutely. So when you book with a travel agent, um, it doesn't cost you as the customer anymore. Um, the price, whether you book it yourself or you book it with me, and sometimes we can even get it cheaper because we have discounts that don't necessarily um, show up on the actual cruise line websites. But when you book with us, you get the knowledge base, the travel experience that we have with all the other cruise lines, while also being able to be involved in booking your vacation. So you're going to be as involved as you want to be with booking your vacation. But when, when you use us, we come along with all this knowledge and travel experience. Um, when you're going on and doing something you may have never done before. Um, we also are a lifeline while you're on your trip. If you need something while you're gone, um, if you know some of your documents get messed up and you need a little assistance or you have questions, we're there every step of the way from the time you take off on your vacation to the time you get home. And so that's also nice, a little bit of peace of mind to have. And like I said, it costs you no more to use a travel agent. And so it's like our services are pretty much free. Um, so why wouldn't you book, you know, with a it's travel a, agent? It's a no-brainer, yeah. I'd rather yeah. deal with somebody that's been on cruises, know what to expect. Exactly. And then something you brought up too a minute ago is the uh, beaches. You like to be on the beach, oh. different beach. Yes. So, and a lot of people think, well, a beach is a beach. But there's They're many different not, types of beaches, yeah. Yes, all, not all beaches are created equal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different beach. Yes, my favorite beach is Carlisle Bay in Barbados. Um, for, it, why is that? Um, because I like, so I like more of a bay area where you're not going to have as many waves crashing into you when you're right. trying to stay out there and enjoy the water. Plus that water, and if you can go check out our Facebook page or our website, we have tons of pictures of Carlisle Bay, but it is like pool water. It is so clear that it looks like you're in a swimming pool versus being in the ocean. Um, and it's it's just the neatest thing. And the first time I ever saw that place, I just, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. <laughs> because <laughs> it, was, it was the most prettiest beach, the waves, you know, there was no waves. It was so calm. And the people in Barbados are so friendly. They're so happy you're there. They want you to drink the local beer. They want you to eat the local food. You know, they want you to have a great time. Um, and so that that's definitely my favorite beach. Now, if Blake was here, he would tell you um, Friars Beach in um, Antigua. But kind of the same thing. It's it's super clear. It's it's very calm water, but he loves it because it's like an uninhabited beach. So there's no hotels. There's no houses. There's no like there's no property on that beach there's one little restaurant um on that beach but the rest of it is all natural and it's just there's something oh, wow. about how calm and beautiful it is there um that that makes it that's his favorite beach so if he was here that's what he would say but so him and I go back and forth on what the best beach is because I say Carlisle Bay and he says Friars Friars Beach which is in Antigua Wow. So also something I was thinking of after we were talking too, lately you've seen on, or I've seen on um, Instagram, the videos of the people that are at port and the ships pulling away and they stay too long. Have you yes. ever had that happen? So yeah. we have not, not yeah. we have not. And luckily knock on wood, not all of our clients have listened to our advice and they don't miss <laughs> the ship. So we, um, if you go on, you know, there's two different types of people. There's people that want to stay with the cruise line and be super safe. And you um, do all the short excursions through the cruise line and the cruise, when you do a short excursion through the cruise line, they guarantee you to get back to the ship. The ship will wait for you. If your excursion gets behind, like they will not leave you. That's part of the safety of booking through the cruise line. Um, but if you do decide to go out on your own, which we we have, you know, instructed people on how to do this, if they want to do this, because a lot of the, the short excursions through the cruise line, they're not they're just not on the beach long enough for us. And so a lot of times we'll find a beach that we want to go to, hop in a taxi, go to the beach. But our our like our rule, our number one rule is that we always head back to the ship two hours before all aboard 
And so if you do that, then you've got plenty of time. If something happens, you've got plenty of time to call that number on the back of your CPAS card. And, you know, we, we have never had any issues with the ship leaving us or even potential of missing the ship because right. we stick to our rules. And that's, that's the beauty of when you book a trip, you know, you have a travel agent. We've done this. We've gone out on our own. It's completely safe in certain areas. And we just tell you, you know, if all the boards at 530, you need to start heading back to the ship at 330, you know, and so if you keep if you keep that that in mind or keep that mindset while you go out, it's perfectly fine. You'll make it back. Um, and they do wait a little bit, but the people, it, it's always people that aren't paying attention to the time that aren't, um, you know, they get, they decided to go out on their own and they're having troubles getting back. They didn't do their research. And it, it's very well, important. You know, if you're going to go out by yourself, you need to do your research. Yeah. And also we're used to being everything done on time. You know, like yeah. when it says two o'clock, it means two o'clock. Yes. Well, <laughs> there's some countries and groups that two o'clock, it could be four, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, so, and those cruise lines um, do not think like that. You know, that you have to think they have about 6,000 people. They're trying to get like one yeah. port to the other. And I promise you, they're not going to let one person hold right. up. 6,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the other passengers are glad of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it, it's, it's a good time watching those people run on. If you're looking for entertainment, you know, head out to the, head out to the outside decks right before it all aboard happens. And you'll see some people. My favorite is when we're in Cosmel and their senior frogs is right on the, the um, dock. Oh, okay that the cruise line docks at and you'll hear them blow the horn and you'll see two or three people get up and start running down the the dock and they've got balloon hats on that somebody made them in senior frogs um in Cozumel and they're like we're coming we're coming and typically well, if they want to enjoy it as much as they could yeah. yes as long as they haven't pulled that that gangway up which is the little ladder the the ramp that you get on the right. ship as long as they haven't pulled that up you're safe but if they have pulled that up, you better quit running because you ain't going to make it. <laughs> true. Oh, my goodness. So um, what, like weather-wise, have you been on a cruise where the weather has just been totally miserable? Yes. Um, you know, and really it depends on where you're, where you're sailing to. So we, um, when you do like the Southern Caribbean, for instance, the islands are so close together that the weather and it's typically always 75 sunny you know or a little hotter um down there we you unless it's like hurricane season we we try to advise to not cruise during hurricane season um yeah. during, during hurricane season go to alaska <laughs> and, yeah. you know and so get away from that but um we have been out in some storms like i said the december cruise there was a tropical storm that hit miami um, in December and so it was a little nasty getting out of Miami but once we got out of Miami the weather did get better um, but when it rains I mean the cruise lines a lot of times they do try to to go around the weather which is kind of interesting when you're on the ship they'll show the map and they'll say we're going to try to go a little ways to the right versus the left to try to get away from this weather uh, a little bit now, I will say we've also been on cruises that go out in the middle of the ocean, like they're not necessarily close to land because we're trying to get somewhere in a certain amount of time. And um, the seas did get a little rough when we got away from land and we were out just kind of out in the middle. We were we were going from um, New York. We were going from New York to Bermuda. And um, the distance between is you, you're a little bit out, out in just open water, basically, and the seas did get a little rough there. Um, but again, you know, we asked our clients, what's your opinion? You know, how do you feel about, do you get motion sickness? Do you, is that a concern for you? Um, because we try to pick the cruise ship or the cruise line, um, you know, locations based off of what your answer is to that. Um, you know, if you're trying to get away from the weather, you don't want any bad weather, then Southern Caribbean, you get all your stops are right there together. Um, you, you won't have as much motion, you know, a lot, much um, ship movement as you might if you're doing a different cruise. Right. Have you done an Alaskan cruise yet? 
Yes, we did that. You know, we're just talking about hurricanes. So we, I re the reason we went to Alaska in 2017, I think it was, um, we originally booked a Southern Caribbean cruise out of San Juan and a hurricane was headed right for San Juan um, the week we were supposed to go on this cruise. So we called Royal oh, wow. Caribbean and they said, look, we can move you to another cruise. You know, you just tell us what you want to do. And so Blake and I decided to go to Alaska. And um, we had said forever, I mean, we are beach people. We love the beach. Yeah. And we always said, Alaska, that's going to be cold. We're not going to like it. But boy, was I wrong. I've heard everybody that's been on a cruise to Alaska is their favorite cruise. Yes. It was, always it was incredible. It The food was incredible. What we got to do, the things we saw, you know, we saw bears. We saw whales. We saw um, bald eagles. Um, we, we did, we flew in a seaplane, which was so neat, um, because, you know, there's lots of parts of Alaska. The only way you can get to them is via seaplane. Um, so that, that was really neat, but yeah, Alaska, golly, it was, it was, it was cold, but it was so beautiful there that like you forget about how cold it is and you just want to go see and do everything. And if you're a seafood lover, like I am, Oh my, you're going to have a great time because I, we, that, that was one of my favorite parts of Alaska was just eating. I mean, the crab legs, the, those King crab legs were as big as your arm, you know? And so you, um, you, you, we got to enjoy that. And so they would bring fresh fish onto the boat and serve it in the dining room. I mean, it, it was incredible. We loved Alaska. Well, neat, neat. Thank you so much for being with me today. I've You're had so welcome. much fun. I'm glad this worked out. And yes. So, yeah, so we'll definitely have people contact you. So we'll put your information on the screen. Yeah. So um, that way people know how to reach out to you, whether it's they want to text you or email yeah. you. Yep. Anything. And we're on um we're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, we have we have all the socials, so you can reach out to us there. Just search Cruise, the letter N, review um, on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, what, whatever the case may be. And, and we're about to go on a cruise, so if you want to um, stay tuned, we're about to do a cruise out of Port Canaveral. And then when we get back, we're, uh, Blake is taking me to Disney. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna yeah. do we're gonna have the whole all the details of every place we're going and what we're doing all on our social media. Well, great. Well, thank you again, Audrey, and good to see you, and look forward to seeing you in Jonesboro soon. Yes, thank you, Rick. You're welcome. And that concludes our episode of Lux Life Discovered. See you soon. Check out Lux Life Discovered on Facebook and Instagram, and on 30a.tv. See you next time on Lux Life Discovered.